Hello everyone, welcome back to another episode of r slash tales from tech support. In today's episode. The day IT quit. All hot and bothered in the server room. Before we get started make sure to subscribe so you will never miss a video. So let's get started. The day IT quit. So I wrote a comment about an office move at my previous employer, where I was told that aircon was not as cost efficient as opening a window. There is a bigger story to it which is really worth sharing. So I joined the company after a long stint with a very well-known organization in the UK. At that job my opinion was largely respected, I was part of some major projects and regularly sat on advisory boards for IT within the org. The only thing lacking was the onward progression, and after five years I had reached a plateau. The interview was good. A strange location, but close to home and reasonable pay managing a small team. Some tough questions thrown in, but nothing I did not know how to handle, or hadn't come across in the past. I got offered the role and started after a brief notice period. Many platitudes were thrown my way by my director at my leaving party, and there was a genuine feeling of loss from everyone in the department in the build-up to my last day. I started in the new role and quickly tried to get the lay of the land. I sat with the staff and asked what they do, and how they do it. One particular member of staff was prone to working from home to cover sick leave, which I had been told to get a handle on. I changed the working from home policy and within two months my entire team had attempted to have me fired by whistleblowing that I refused to let the team have my password and I was hacking the computers. It ended with the instigator being let go so I was down one member of first line. In short the outgoing IT manager was related to the boss and was being moved sideways. The team itself was a ragtag bunch making do with what they had been left with after an IT outsourcer had ballsed up the systems years previously. Two of the staff had no IT experience and had been placed in the department to keep them from causing trouble. Under my management the department transformed. I put in place loads of efficiency changes to get the department doing things right, simple things like WDS to deploy PC images and WSUS for patches. I got the department new servers and got the systems to be almost automated to the point where the IT department mostly did document management, first-line support and development. We got to participate in an office move. A seemingly normal thing for most IT departments, but in our case it was a minefield, especially given that we were being given one month to do it in, including fiber runs for internet, three-month lead time from open reach in the UK. So we get the move done in six weeks. On the day the new office opened we had one call about a printer not working. I sent an email stating to our absent boss that it had gone well. I got an email back stating that it was disappointing that the printer issue hadn't been identified in advance. I was gobsmacked. I had been having discussions with a recruiter who was headhunting for a huge once-in-a-lifetime role, and I'd been putting him off for a week because I wasn't confident about one particular area they kept going back to. I called and said I'd go for it. So the interview went well, I had a good chat with the potential new boss and waited. The next day I had a sit down with my first liner. FL, hi AP, I need to let you know I am moving out of the area. I'm going to be handing in my notice. I'm going to use the relocation as an early retirement. Me, wow, that is really good for you. Obviously I am really sad that you will be leaving, but I hope you enjoy the new home and the retirement. FL, thanks. I wanted you to know before I sent the letter to HR. So the HR department is notified and later that day my boss has a brief exchange with her. Boss, I hear you're leaving us FL. FL, yes. I've bought a new house and am going to do it as an early retirement. Boss, well good luck, we all wish you the best. FL leaves shortly after for the day, and I stay behind to discuss the future IT first line support. Me, FL retiring is a bit of a shock. Boss, yes, but it's a good thing. She's a troublemaker and always has been. It will be good to see her go. 
Me, slightly taken aback, okay. So should I get on to the agencies in the morning and put out a vacancy? Boss, let's not. I want to assess how the department copes without one more troublemaker. At this point my brain is screaming. I was already working weekends on supporting the remote sites and was trying to get things running properly, I was close, but needed the extra person. I thought about how I could really change everything with a new hire that would be on board with me. I went home and lamented my situation. The offer from the interview hadn't materialized. I spent the next few days contemplating my future and dealing with a rapidly overheating server room. Then I got a call. Agent, they want a second interview with you. It'll be with the MD and the department director. Me, when are they thinking? Agent, two days from today. Me, it's short notice, but I will be there. The interview goes really well. I get the job offer on the train after leaving the interview, I recall reaching home and crying in front of my wife in pure elation, and the letter comes through. I have a chat with my team and tell them I will be leaving. At this point the second line text states he has taken an offer as well. I realize the enormity of the situation. I go back to my desk and fire off my email to HR. The PA to the boss pulls me aside. PA, what the bloody hell is going on? Me, excuse me? PA, have you been planning this? Me, don't be ridiculous. PA, okay then where is your offer from? Me, big company. The salary is X. I would be mad not to take it. PA, what about tech? Where is he going? Me, I don't know. With that the department was left with only the developer slash programmer. She quit the next day. We had a meeting as a team with the boss who essentially said he wanted us to keep it to ourselves and not share the knowledge with the other departments before he could announce what the plan was. Basically it was outsourced. I sat with the company selected and handed everything over, and they complimented me on a good setup saying they had never taken over the IT with such ease. This didn't make an impact on my boss though. His PA was instructing HR to advise that I was taking unauthorized breaks and spending too long making phone calls on my mobile. I politely stated that the calls I made were for company support issues and that the breaks were legally protected in a manner which said f asterisk 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 off you are trying to be silly now. I asked, Reed begged, to be let go early to which my boss wrote back it's my decision, I'll decide when you go and if you ask again it will be the full three months. I rang the new boss and asked if a sh asterisk tty reference was a showstopper, explaining that the situation was souring rapidly and he confirmed a reference was not a condition of the offer. I went and made a coffee in the break room with my staff. I said my goodbyes, wished them luck and got hugs from the female staff. I told them to follow procedure, immediately disable my account and packed my company assets into an envelope which I placed on the HR manager's desk. I then got up, swiped out, leaving my pass on the HR desk afterward and went for a final permanent lunch break. All hot and bothered in the server room. Had a chat with an old colleague yesterday, and I was reminded of this tale. This takes place back in 2013. I had finally had it with the sleazy attitude at the fix-it shop, another tale for another time, and gotten a job at a server monitoring and maintenance firm. Not exactly what I studied at university, but at least it beat flipping burgers like some of my former classmates were doing at the time. I was still very much a bumbling greenhorn scrambling to stretch what little of my university education that could be called server knowledge to fit a job description focused exclusively on server knowledge when this happened. It's mid-July and the heat has driven us unlucky few not on vacation to beg, borrow, and steal every fan we can get our hands on to keep the office somewhat bearable. Well there I was, sitting in my fortress of fans when the monitoring software threw up a big alert notice. One of the 24-7 uptime servers we monitored for a local client was throwing a hissy fit and not responding to ping. After a quick round of rock, paper, 
scissors that I lost I had to leave my precious cool office and head out to see what was causing the server to misbehave. One car right across town later and I found myself at a small building in the business park just outside town. I was met by a security guard that told me he had been called out by the client ITVP to let me in, since everyone working there was on vacation. He let me into the building and after some searching we found the server room, complete with a door that wouldn't be out of place in a high security prison. When the guard opened the server room door it was clear as day why the server was acting up. The wave of heat that billowed out from the server room was like opening an oven on full blast. The cooling system had clearly taken a vacation with the rest of the employees and left the poor server stewing in its own heat. After disabling the door alarm and helping me prop up the door with a chair the guard left in search of someplace cool and I dug in to try and coax the cooling system to life again. My very basic troubleshooting of course couldn't cut it and I resorted to plan B, moving the few portable fans in the foyer to the server room to blow out the heat. The fans were the kinda expensive, back then, rotating tower type that blew out air in a vertical line instead of the usual circular fan head. First fan in place and I quickly realized this was going to be a uphill battle. The fan didn't as much blow out the heat as just churn it around. As I was moving in the second fan my hands were already slick with sweat and slipping on the smooth plastic covers. I must have bumped the chair holding the door when I was wrangling in the second fan and trying to not bash it up or drop it, because when I managed to get the fan into the server room I heard the door slam shut and locked behind me. And the only one around able to open was the guard, who was out of earshot somewhere else in the building. Well, shucks. Luckily enough I had cell phone signal in the server room so I called one of my coworkers at the office and told him what had happened. After the laughter had stopped he promised to head over to find the guard and tell him to let me out. It was only after I ended the call I realized something bad. The heat was building again, slowly but surely. The fans I plugged it wasn't up to scratch cooling down a open foyer, not to mention a closed server room, and I made a rough guess how long the server would survive in the building heat. The number I came up with was not a not very reassuring number. T minus 60 minutes to complete server meltdown. I shifted the fans to blow directly towards the server and put them on the highest setting. Nothing more I could do now but wait for my coworker to drive over and let me out. T minus 30 minutes to complete server meltdown. I checked my phone. 30 minutes had passed since I spoke to my coworker and he promised to fetch the guard. I was sweating all over now and wished I had brought water with me. In an effort to cool down somewhat I stripped down to my underwear, as my shirt and pants were already soaked enough with sweat that I imagined I could squeeze it out. Bra and panties are pretty much the same as a bikini, right? And bikinis are summer wear, right? So I was still dressed decently for summer, at least in my mind. T-20 minutes to complete server meltdown. I felt I couldn't wait any longer. I called the office and got another coworker on the line. I asked if we could break the 24-7 uptime and shut the server down instead of having it melt itself, and me with it, to slag. He said he would text me the commands I needed to gracefully shut it down, and he would square it with the client later. T-15 minutes to complete server meltdown. Pling. I grabbed my phone and hastily read through the message. There was a lot of commands needed to shut everything down without the server losing its mind completely. I propped my phone up near the keyboard and went to work. T-10 minutes to complete server meltdown. I must have looked like every teenage nerd's dream when my coworker and the guard eventually opened the door. There I was, wearing only my underwear, glistening with sweat and smashing in the last commands to gracefully shut down the server before it cooked itself to death. Server shutting down. Meltdown averted. My coworker later told it took so long because he had to search for the guard. Apparently he had, after searching for almost 20 minutes, found the guard asleep in one of the few offices that had a ceiling fan installed. I was too wrung out to give him a good earful so I just downed the bottle of water my coworker gave me and got dressed again. 
Once back at the office I was told to take the rest of the day off to recover from my ordeal, and for my co-workers to laugh at the newbie behind her back I guess.